Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. There is a power that is stronger than opening blind eyes. The real power in the kingdom is the ability to stand in God's presence. A man never ate any pleasant bread for 21 days. He stood at one spot. That's power. When you read the Old Testament, you will find men who really have power. There was a time God told Ezekiel, lie on one side for 390 days. And for 390 days, Ezekiel didn't move. He was lying on his right hand side. When he finished and you thought, you thought he would go on holiday, God said, turn to the other side. And he laid there for 40 days. A man was interceding for 430 days. That man is stronger than who raises the dead. Because a man who can bring his body under subjection is stronger than a man who can take a city. And so when he was saying, be strong in the Lord, he was talking about an unleashing of a power that is on your inside. There's a power you have that can make you tarry in God's presence until you become like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. Did you notice what happened in the book of Ezekiel? After Ezekiel stayed there for a long time, Ezekiel didn't need to go out anymore. Anytime Ezekiel wants to go out, he will say, the spirit of the Lord took me by the lock of my hair and carried me. Ezekiel began to travel in the spirit. Because he turned his body to a point where his spirit could come out of his body at will. It's a dimension of power that makes a man become invincible. We are too distracted by the world system. We are in every birthday. We are in every marriage. We are in every program. We are on every website. Wasting our time when strong men are building stamina on the altar. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The word power of his might is synergy because see when you become strong inside you will notice that other entities that are like you will begin to come to you because your friends are not only on earth you can also make friends in the spirit the reason you have not made friends in the spirit is because you have not stayed long enough stay on the altar for three months and see who will come to you you will be shocked that while you are yet there gabriel will show up and say i was given speed i was made to fly swiftly to come and give you skill and understanding work on the altar and see if you will not see Zacharias if you will not see Isaiah if you will not see Enoch they have not gone anywhere the Bible called them the spirit of just men made perfect when Daniel wanted to contend with the prince of Persia he needed connections and there are some connections that are not in the government house there are some connections that are in the throne room and suddenly a cherub will walk up to you and say I came to help you that's why you will know that our helpers are many. When you pursue men and it doesn't work, pursue spirits. Our helpers are not only natural. There is a place you will get to. You will be shocked that Catherine Kuma just passed to glory. And true priesthood, you too can enter glory. You don't need to die to go to glory. You can go to glory through the altar. One can go through dying, another can go through the altar. And when synergy is achieved, something will change. The power of his might. The earth is a distraction. This world is too noisy. See, sometimes you need to hear stories of witches and understand what they do. A witch can go on a hundred days fast, not looking at the sun. To be able to meet a demon a demon that has wickedness enough to afflict with death a witch can be indoors for eight months and that witch may only drink water and maybe light light food once in a day and for eight months that witch will not step out because the witch is preparing herself to meet the devil and a principality will come to that witch and empower that witch to be able to subdue system and so that witch doesn't need religion if he enters your office and you don't have the stature to dethrone her the day she enters that office that day you will leave that office because of the weight of her priesthood she came with eight months of fasting she came with eight months of intercession she came with eight months of communion with demons you are strolling about on Twitter and on Instagram and you put your hands in the pocket. You want to fight a witch that has more education in the spirit than you. We have all the advantages.
but we are illiterate in the spirit and the reason is because we have not waited long enough because we don't have the power of his might there's no synergy he said the heavens belong to god he said but the earth he has given to the sons of men and so when the principality shows up he will find out those who are prophetic because the prophetic people are the first gatekeepers if you are a prophet and you are not on the altar what will happen is that your spiritual antenna will be open and so any spirit can manipulate you because you have the ability to pick and to pick signals if a prophet shows up here now his emotions are high his sensitivity is high that's why many prophets are victims of immorality because they pick frequencies so much and their emotional intelligence is very high and so what principalities do is to search men that have sought gift and then they begin to traffic them through lust when they traffic lust in their direction and they are able to infiltrate them they will now use them to infiltrate the territory and so what the devil will do is that he will raise three categories of people the first people he will raise are messengers the messengers are those who talk and disseminate the activity of the devil some of them become fornicators some of them become liars some of them become malicious people they keep malice they create contention provoke anger what he's trying to do is to create an atmosphere for the other princes to come in because anywhere there is contention anywhere there is jealousy anywhere there is fight and argument evil can exist there and so when the messengers are able to do it you'll find a young lady she goes to sleep with a married man the family scatters as the family scatters the children go wayward the wife goes into another thing the man goes into another they are discomfiting the structure of the territory and this is what the messengers do somebody thinks his mouth is rapid he goes to a place plant the seed of discourse cause problem between two people the problem escalates and affect 20 people they are called messengers so many people are bearing the name magdalene Martha, and mary but they are agents of the devil they are the lowest cadre of demonic powers they are messengers they bring gossip they bring malice they bring backbiting they bring lies they spread rumor and when they have created that atmosphere of chaos then the next category of people coming those ones are called warlocks a warlock is a spiritual programmer a warlock is more intelligent than a messenger a messenger the devil just takes advantage of his appetite he desires to see people quarrel he likes it when people are fighting he likes argument so he keeps spreading it and when he creates the atmosphere warlocks now go to work now that there is contention warlocks will now create a program so that because you people are vulnerable to malice problems will keep happening here for the malice never to end and so a simple problem that provoked a malice of two days suddenly can no longer be settled for 10 years because so long as the malice remains the atmosphere is sustained a warlock can show up because this man fornicated a messenger came and made the man to fornicate the wife now the warlock will create a program of unforgiveness so the wife cannot forgive the man for 15 years he will keep telling the man you are a fornicator you betrayed me i will never forgive you bitterness is growing in her heart and then this man is being pushed away so what will happen is that the man will continue with the program of fornication and the woman will continue with the program of bitterness that family is now open what they are doing is creating a system for the other demonic spirits to come and dwell when the warlock finishes then a sage comes a sage is a warlock that is of the highest order his job is to impart gifts and capacities it is actually a sage that demons work with a sage can come to you and say bring your hand he will spit and rub his hand and say from now if anybody is beaten by scorpion rub your hand there it will go you will do it it will happen because a sage has spiritual intelligence so a sage trains warlocks and impacts them sages are not many sages are transmitters between spirits and men a sage trains a warlock and a warlock manipulates messengers but the goal is to create an atmosphere where demons can dwell now if there is no priesthood to discern that atmosphere and to scatter it you will notice that as the atmosphere keeps building and becomes strong it will become a spiritual system that spiritual system is where the princes of darkness will dwell this is how devils take people 
families and nations. Somebody may offend you and you say you never forgive him. You are not doing yourself a favor. You are actually doing yourself a disfavor. Because that unforgiveness, the energy that is coming out of you, you may not know, but there are wise men who are interpreting it in the spirit. Because every man who is passing carries an energy. If your heart is full of love and purity, it's like a white cloud in the spirit. The demonic beings they can see. That's how they know those who are Christians. They don't know those who are Christians in the spirit because they call themselves Christians. They know those who are Christians because of the kind of energy they emit. And so when you pass, they can pick those energies. If there is bitterness, if there is lust, if there is anger, they can see it. And then they know that, oh, this one is a victim. They now begin to trouble you. This is why you forgive people whether they deserve it or not. Because it's about your own safety. The energy you are emitting in the spirit is a language. A warlock can see it. If a warlock sees you, he can tell where you are coming from. He can tell what you want to do. He can tell who you are. He can read your energy and discern your personality. How many of you have watched Meli? That's how cities are born. You need the intelligence of a warlock to build a city. And so what the warlocks and the sages do is that they create spiritual quadrants. Quadrants of weaknesses that are in the men of those territories. Some are full of bitterness. Some are full of pride. Some are full of lust. Some are full of anger. When those quadrants are completed, then the demonic princes will begin to come in. When the prince is coming, some will sit on the prophetic corrupt people. Some will sit on the proud corrupt people. Some will sit on those who are full of lust. When they dominate them, they now have territorial legality. You can't just come and say, get out. No, it won't work. The reason is because the will of this man that they have enslaved gives them legality to be in those systems. And so when you come into the government, you will find legalities that princes have to sit in those governments. If you come into families, you will find legalities that princes have to sit there. It will take more than doctrine for things to change. You can preach from morning till night. Those princes will not go. Did you not read? about Peter in Luke 22 verse 31 Jesus is the living word of God he was with Peter yet he said Simon Simon Satan desires to have you that means there are things that the world alone cannot do because the world was with Peter yet Satan desired to have him the world had to pray for Peter he said I have prayed for you I am the word but I have prayed for you the problem the church has is that we are preaching dead logos to people that Satan has. We are preaching dead logos to people that are under the government of Satan. Somebody gossiped for five years and Satan has found a stronghold on that person. You now show up and say God is killed. The living word was with Peter but the living word had to pray for Peter. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. He said, when thou art recovered, strengthen thy brethren the world had to add priesthood in order to save peter in the garden of gethsemane jesus went to pray and he told them i am with you i am the world he said but pray that you fall not into temptation do you see why many people have scriptures in their head but they are slaves of spirits because even if the world is with you if there is no priesthood you will fall into temptation i am the world but pray if you don't pray you will fall into temptation you can have all the Bible in your head. You will fall into temptation. Because the word made flesh was with people. The word made flesh counseled them to pray. What will keep you standing is what prayer does to my word that is in your spirit. And so where there is no priesthood, people become vulnerable. Because there is a program in the territory that has made them slaves already. A friend of mine relocated from one part of the country to another. He now discovered after two weeks that he started having lost. What is going on? He didn't know he came into a web. That there are territorial spirits there. That manipulate people that have his kind of frequency. Because he is prophetic. And so the moment he came and they picked the radar of the prophetic. They began to woo him with the energy of the environment. And he discovered after two weeks he started feeling lonely. He now began to look for girls to make friends with. And he made friends with a girl. In fact, they had planned. They had planned for the girl to visit. Because they've talked into... You know, people have sex talking on phone. They have talked into sex on phone already. So they needed to consummate it in his house. But God showed mercy. 
people were praying for him. And so when the lady came, both of them prepared for what should happen to happen. Somebody now came to visit that day and refused to go. As the lady came in, they started talking about to fall into the grave. He said, I saw a young man that is void of understanding. He said, he has gone the way of the strange woman. And he said, no one that goes that way returns. No one that takes that path returns. He was about to join in the path of no return. But prayers have been made. Prayers. 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 And so somebody from nowhere came to the house and sat down and wouldn't go. That day God took advantage of his appetite for stories and they kept talking stories. My friend was angry. He wanted to stab the brother. But the brother was a salvation. After a while, the weight of iniquity broke and he started weeping. When the lady left, he knelt down, confessed and was rededicated. Prayer created another algorithm, a counter programming that diffused what the devil planned. Because the devil had everything in place. But when men pray, oh my God, when men pray, the power to sort darkness is activated. Sometimes you will be helpless, but prayer will help you. I was in the club, I was in the club, a pastor. I had the destiny of an apostle. But before I entered my calling, the devil had the program and manipulated my way into the club. And when I stood in the club, I had taken a bottle of Baron de Devar and I heard from the war, the wages of sin is death. What gave the war the power to speak was the prayer of my mother. He said, this one will serve you. Not one hair from his head will fall to the ground. So because of that prayer, even when I wanted to go the way of iniquity, I couldn't anymore because I was a burnt offering. The one who had legitimate authority over me burnt me on the altar as a sacrifice to God. And so when I thought I was wise, when demons began to manipulate my prophetic radar, they couldn't take me too far. Because those prayers, they can make stones to talk. They can make walls to talk. If men who rise to help you, even inanimate objects will suddenly come alive to save you. Because prayer is the salt, the power that saves men. Anywhere prayer is withdrawn, anywhere priesthood is withdrawn, a people are about to perish. Hope you know that we are saved today because Abraham saw us. He said, Abraham, your father saw my day and he rejoiced in it. Intercessors begat us on the altar. That's why today you, you were just going to, to watch football and somebody told you an evangelist is coming and you entered there. You heard the gospel and repented. You think it just happened like that. No, that was a program. Your steps has been manipulated. How you met that boy, how you were invited, how you accepted, how you came to the altar call, all of that were the tears of the intercessors. Because when the intercessors were crying, they were not just crying, they were burning. You see, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. You are the offspring of the intercessors of ages past. And so when we want to create change in society, our altar must come alive. And Samuel knew. So he didn't run to the king. He didn't run to the army. In fact, in the olden times, when kings are in trouble, they look for prophets. But today, prophets are running after kings because what prophets are looking for are cars. In the days of old, when a prophet enters a palace, he's coming with the word of the Lord. A young prophet entered the palace of Jeroboam and he looked at him and he said, the hand of God is against you. You have erred against the God of heaven. You will die. And the king stretched his hand and the hand paralyzed. Because touch not the Lord's anointed. Do his prophets no harm. Today they can touch us because we are not on the altar. We are pursuing the same thing that the hiddings are pursuing. We are pursuing the same glamour that the world is pursuing. Our altars are desolate. There are many people with scepters that you save nations. But the altar is empty. They are talking in the public and the altar is calling them. Come back. Your throne is not in the government house. Your throne is on the altar. When the I wanted to make Daniel a governor, he said, no, don't make me. You can make others. I will sit at the gate. My throne is not in the government. My throne is at the gate. I change things from here. And the Bible says, Samuel took a stone. He planted it, poured oil on it, and called it Ebenezer. And the Bible says, from that day, the hand of God 
was against the Philistines. Where are the men who know spiritual things? Where are the wise men of our generation? Where are the spiritual technocrats of our generation? This is why I cry on the altar. We can't preach like every other person. When the nation is bleeding, where are those who can stand and say, Lord, restore? Where are those who know what they should do to bring a nation to the feet of the cross? When Archbishop Benson in the house, I wanted to change the fortune of Benin City. The Lord gave him strange instructions. He said, at night, go around the city and go to a roundabout and pray there. When he did it for some days, the signal of what he was doing began to enter the cove. He wasn't talking to anybody. He was walking in the night to a roundabout to pray and prophesy. After three days, they picked the signal in the demonic cove. And the next time he came, he saw a pot and they butchered some strange meat that he doesn't know which animal it came from. They came to set a trap ahead of him. Because they know what this man is doing is of setting the balance. That means what is happening in the city, there is also a demonic watcher watching the program in the spirit. And so they are not moved. No matter the reforms you bring, they are not moved. They are only moved if somebody through priesthood is beginning to affect the program. Because the reason every young lady wants to be naked, even they don't know. The reason every government official wants to loot money and go to Dubai, even they don't know. It's a program. And so no matter the advice you give, it won't work until you go back to the foundation where those negative programs were, were, were written and you begin to change it. If you start changing it, they will visit you. That's when you will know that you are doing business in the spirit. You are not doing business because you have a church and you are preaching. You are doing business because the spirit are aware of your activity. And the only activity the spirit are aware of are the activities on the altar. Ebenezer! And suddenly, the hand of God appeared. And the whole army moved back. Even the land that they took from Israel were retrieved. We cannot take the media until priests arise. We cannot take the government until priests arise. We cannot take the economy until priests arise. There are those from among us that God will send there. But the reason they will be effective is because we are praying. Four years ago, the Lord told me, He said, I'm raising three categories of men. He said, Some of them are apostolic missionaries. He said, That's where I'm putting you. You will travel around the nations and you will preach the gospel of the kingdom. He said, But be mindful to know that what God is doing has a triangle. Is a triangle. He said, There are those that will never be known. But the reason you will be effective on the field is because they will be effective on the altar. Because the reason the church in Colossus will succeed is because Epaphras is praying. If Epaphras stops praying, the church in Colossus will die. He said, So while you are traveling, you need to be aware that there are intercessors who are praying. The same way you have burdens to take nations for God by traveling to those nations. He said, that's how others will have burdens to take nations on their altar. And so he said, be careful only to go to where I send you. Because where I send you is where the intercessors have conquered. So we don't go to nations because the door opened. We go to nations because we are sent. Because if you go where an intercessor has not covered, you will be in trouble. Because this thing is partnership and synergy in the spirit. And the Lord also told me, don't venture into any phase or any project until I tell you. Because the projects that you are supposed to carry out, you won't pay for it. He said, there are sons of consolation that I'm raising. Their own burden is to sponsor the kingdom. So if I go to a nation that God has not sent me to, I will be a victim. It means prayer has not covered that nation. And if I don't have enough authority to survive, I may die there. And so even though doors open, I will consult with God to find out which nation he's sending me to. I started having invitations to America from 2017. There are many nations that they paid flight, paid for hotel allocation since 2018. I've not gone. Because God said, go only to the nations that I send you to. Because those who are praying for your kind of calling, they have to first of all take that nation in prayer before you can manifest in that nation. The Lord also told me, don't start a project until I tell you. Don't be creative. The only projects you can execute are the ones I tell you. Because when I tell you, the people who should sponsor it, I've already spoken to them. Because there are three quadrants. There are those who are praying who will never be known. There are those who are all over the place who are speaking for God. And there are those who are sponsoring with their finances. God will exhort their horn and give them wisdom for wealth creation. 
but the reason is because there is a kingdom to sponsor and so their burden is to find genuine men and genuine kingdom projects and sponsor it and there are others who will be on the altar nobody will know them when a popular apostle comes here you want to give him a seed and have him impart you but there are many sitting here that have more stature than me preaching to you but their place is behind the altar nobody will know them it's in heaven that they are honored but it's for the program of god to find expression you will be greatly mistaken when you think the man who is traveling from nation to nation or the man who gathers ten thousand people is the real mighty man no that man is the one showcasing what the intercessor and the financiers are doing the people who are doing the real work are the intercessors and the financiers if the financiers stop the screen will vanish if the financiers stop the rolling headlight will vanish if the financiers stop the television station will close down the reason you find the excellence is because somebody is paying and if the intercessors stop the miracles will stop if the intercessors stop the souls will stop because the hearts of men are not pricked because you preach an intelligent message the hearts of men are pricked because the holy ghost is working on them and those who mobilize the holy spirit are those who are on the order it's a technology for taking systems and in the same way there are certain intercessors that pray for nations there are certain intercessors that pray for leaders and so the reason a nation will do well is because the quorum of intercession for that nation is complete no matter the apostles that come it is the intercessors that opens the heaven over a nation thank you for watching please kindly like comment subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video and don't forget to share thank you